Hello, Church of St. Clement family and friends. I know I speak for not just Robin um, and Leslie and our seminarians, uh, former seminarians and our current seminarian, uh, and the vestry and all the leadership at the Church of St. Clement. I know I speak for them when I just say, peace be with you. Uh, these are hard times. There's, there's just no doubt about it. As I'm standing here right now looking into my iPhone, uh, the President of the United States is in the hospital with COVID. Um, I feel like every day in one sense is, is Groundhog Day. You know, it's hard to know the difference between a weekday and a weekend. Um, some of you are, are, all of you who are working so hard to, to, to make meaning of your days. So there's that sense that it's like Groundhog Day or Groundhog Week. I think it's technically 193 days so far um, since the first kind of lockdown orders in this country. Um, and yet, and yet, although there's a kind of monotony that's hard to find meaning in the day, we also have these crazy, stressful um, news announcements. Um, and it, it seems like that, that, that just when you think you know how hard a day is going to be, you hear of something else that's happening, some, some racial injustice, some, some unbelievable act of partisanship and division. Um, e either, either all you hear about is the virus or all you hear about is people who don't want to hear anything about the virus. And now the, the president has it as well. So just peace be with you, all of you. Um, and I hope and I pray that you are finding what I'm finding, actually, um, through, through the community of the Church of St. Clement, um, that, that whether you, you come to yoga online um, or, or the chapel prayers um, of, the, of the preschool, or you've been showing up on Sunday, or maybe you haven't, but I would just encourage you to, to, to try that link and do that. Um, because I know what I've found is that in all of the craziness that's happening, um, and, and also the, the, the small pandemics happening in your own life. So sure, we have the, the pandemic of, of racial injustice, of COVID, of, of, of creation uh, and climate change, the way we have the fires and the hurricanes and the tornadoes. Um, the, we literally ran through the whole alphabet. You know how they, they have one uh, letter of the alphabet to, to spell the name of every hurricane? We actually got to the end of it. We're now in the Greek alphabet. By the way, that's what happens when you get to 26 names. You have to go into the Greek alphabet. And we're actually still moving through the Greek alphabet. I mean, that's the kind of year we're having. But I know that also each one of you might perhaps be having your own crisis, your health crisis, the health of someone in your family, unemployment, a break in relationship in your extended family not being able to afford all the devices you need. You thought your taxes were enough for your kid to go to a public school or your kids to go to a public school. And now there are all these costs involved with you actually turning your house, like retrofitting your house into a school. And by the way, you're still trying to work. And, and maybe you're used to the intergenerational support and companionship of, of older parents or, or having your kids see their grandparents. Or I know myself, my mom lives in Goodwin House. Um, so she's like a mile away from me, but I've seen her like two, maybe two or three times since February, um, and she's only a mile away. Um, so there's just, there's separation and there's division and there's stress for many of you in your personal life. Forget the madness when you turn on cable news. So the question is, as we approach this election, Robin and I have been talking and praying um, and thinking about each of you um, and, and what's, what's not just helpful, but what's hopeful. Um, there are a lot of people, myself included, who have great anxiety about November 3rd. Um, what, how is the election going to go? What's going to happen afterward? Um, we've had little moments um, of, 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 of seeing that, that, that mail-in voting is so important to so many people, and yet there's also suggestions that, that, that the counting of each one of those ballots is itself going to be a contested thing. So it's almost like it's not even we're waiting for November 3rd. We're, we're waiting for the beginning of this like season of voting and contention about voting. So we don't want, I don't want, to be the kind of person that sort of approaches that um, that election day with just fear and, and dread. <laughs> um, but here's the good news. The Sunday before voting day is November 1st, which is a great feast in the church, the Feast of All Saints. And it's um, one of the feasts of the year where people can renew their baptismal vows as a whole community. And Robin has decided that that's in fact what we're gonna do. I'll be preaching on that day and we'll be renewing our vows. So it's a Sunday that some people use for confirmation as well, or reaffirmation of vows or to reception into the church. So we really wanna take this Sunday on as a Sunday. We're not just waiting for November 3rd with you know, fear and trembling, but that we're gonna move as a congregation to November 1st, to All Saints Day and prepare ourselves just like we did last year um, for the renewal of our baptismal vows. You remember last year we did a 30-day countdown. It was like a 30-day confirmation challenge where we invited the entire congregation 
to to answer one question that was um, that was given out to everyone it was also posted on a Facebook page. One question that, that would move you toward understanding or thinking about another dimension of your baptismal promises. And the idea was to do that for 30 days so that when we actually had the day, some of the language and some of the images um, you'd been carrying with you and reflecting on. So you were sort of, again, it was this countdown to make those vows. And we've decided this year, more than ever perhaps, is instead of just sort of crawling toward November 3rd, Election Day, let's march together as a community toward All Saints Day. So what we're inviting you to do is to engage in this 30-day countdown toward the renewing of our vows on November 1st. But also, let's be realistic, as we renew ourselves to take these vows again, that's actually great preparation for voting. Many of you will have voted ahead of time, but it's great preparation to, to sort of know on that Tuesday, as the democracy and its processes are unfolding, that you have been thinking for a month about what it means not just to be a citizen of America, but what it means to be a citizen of the kingdom of God. So join us for the, these 30 days. All you've got to do is check out the Facebook page each day and you'll see a, a question um, that's going to touch on something that the Episcopal Church believes about being both a citizen of the kingdom of God and a citizen of any particular country. And the truth is, um, I taught a course uh, two years ago um, at, uh, at BTS. Um, we, it, we were approaching the uh, 2018 midterm election and there was so much anxiety even about that election um, that I taught a course for 10 weeks. It was called Anglican Voting or Episcopal Voting. And the idea was that, you know, the Episcopal faith doesn't tell you who to vote for, but there are many people that say, well, I'm an Episcopalian, and the truth is, you know, that there's not like an Episcopal way to vote. And the answer to that is, of course there is. Absolutely. This, this denomination doesn't tell you for whom you should vote, but it absolutely directs our conscience as to how we should vote. But the truth is many people just don't spend a lot of time thinking about that. Um, so here are things that the Episcopal Church has very firm convictions and teaching and, and documents and suggestions. Um, things like public education and immigration and health care um, and uh, the right to bear arms um, uh, and end of life, beginning of life issues. Um, all of it. There is great teaching in the Episcopal Church and there are great organizations. So what I thought would help us is that there's just going to be this question each day. And if you want to just read the question, just think about it, pray about it. If you get to walk outside your house, if you're able to walk, and if you're not able to walk, just sit with it in bed. Um, if you're not on Facebook, maybe you could have a friend call you up and give you the question each day. In fact, if there's no one else who can do it for you, please send me an email. I will call you in the morning and I will tell you what the question is. Um, and then what I'm going to do is put in the comments links either to short videos or to short documents that give you a little bit of the Episcopal... Um, uh, conviction or um, uh, the lens through which the Episcopal Church sees that question. You don't have to do that, but if you, so it just lets you go deeper if you want to. And I'll post videos that are maybe five or eight minute videos or uh, things that are like articles. So it won't be like a book suggestion. Uh, it'll just let you kind of dip your feet uh, into what it means to be an Episcopalian and how to vote out of those convictions. Take 30 days together. And there's going to be a simple question each day that really starts to tune. Think of it like tuning an instrument. We're trying to tune the conscience you have to the convictions of what it means to be an Episcopalian. And I hope when this is done, when we come to November 1st, All Saints Day, you will realize that the reason we do it on All Saints is because we believe that the saints are with us, actually with us, and that they will have come through the 30 days with us, and they will stand in glory and honor of God when we take our vows or we say them again. And that will be our preparation for just 72 hours later to then be citizens of this country and to defend democracy and the dignity of the human person. But we'll be more ready in the coming weeks after the election to pray our way through what it is we should do or say um, so that the truth would set people free. The only way to really prepare for that is to, to take the vows that we took in baptism or to say them for the first time and know that that is the way to sort of aim our conscience at who knows what can come from the first week in November on. So join us. Join us for the 30-day countdown. Come on to this Facebook page each day. It'll be posted at midnight each day. So if you get up really early or you happen to stay up very late, um, the question will be posted at midnight. And use the comment section to, to have your own responses. Um, is there something you want to add? Is something you want other people to know? You can also send a private message if there's some feedback you think you'd like us to have along the way. 
to take this journey with us because number, remember third is coming whether we prepare for it or not and how wonderful and what a gift that we can prepare to renew our vows. If we weren't doing it the Sunday before this election, then we would have to invent a feast. I can't think of anything to do 72 hours on a Sunday before election day, then renew our baptismal vows, which renews our identity both to ourselves and to each other and before God. Peace be with you, my friends, and I will see you here daily for the question online.